Hi, my name is Florence Yee, and I am the artist in residence at the Robert McLaughlin Gallery. I'm an interdisciplinary artist based in Toronto and Montreal. Um, for the past three months, I've been working on embroidery and uh, photography as an archive material. Um, in this first piece uh, that took up most of my time at the residency, I've been embroidering um, on a printed image of a carpet I used to own. It's printed on a very thin cotton voile fabric, uh, and I've added some tassels uh, on the edges. The text in the center reads, the gallery left red dot stickers out for buyers to purchase pieces. A stranger came up to me and stuck one on my chest, then complimented the quality of my French. So this uh, text um, is part of my uh, personal experiences that I've been uh, documenting in these short and concise snippets that I include in my work. I use them to question what we take for granted uh, and in this piece particularly what the um, parallels are between the possession and purchase of artwork and uh, the objectification and imperialism of um, quote-unquote foreign bodies. Um, as a queer Asian person I've been um, dealing with many challenges when it comes to exhibiting in uh, art spaces, participating in art communities, um, but this was an experience that happened to me uh, four years ago that I was reminded of when I was speaking um, to, to others about this rise in violence in the f past few months over the pandemic. Um, but I, I, I want to think of not just the large uh, tragedies, but also the everyday and the mundane. Uh, and that's why I used this image of a carpet um, as if to make a domestic space, uh, but also to clue us into the everyday ways that uh, this type of this thought, uh, this type of rhetoric might infiltrate a space. Um, you may also notice the uh, aforementioned red dot stickers that I've um, chosen to render as embroidered one inch circles uh, directly onto the carpet uh, or the fabric and they uh, litter the space on the floors, on the walls, on other pieces, near the didactic. It demonstrates the sort of contamination of a space, but also uh, implicates not just this work, but the walls and thus the institution itself, uh, the institution of displaying artwork. Further into the corner of the gallery, I have this uh, other embroidered piece. It comes from uh, a photo album cover that I had found in my grandmother's basement. There are many of them because they seem to be uh, something that a photo center would hand out to people, maybe in the 80s, uh, from what I can tell of the typographic design. Um, and I picked it up because it felt so strangely nostalgic, even though I wasn't alive in the 80s. Um, and I have embroidered these as um, a photo album of spreads of the same cover embroidered in increasingly desaturated colors uh, or analogous colors. Uh, when you flip from page to page, you see both the image and the backside of the covers and the more you flip the uh, paler it gets until we reach the second half of the photo album which is just the 
blank backsides of each cover. I am interested in this idea of nostalgia and how we are so drawn to it as um, an easier digestion of the past, uh, but one that is unjustly flattening to difficult narratives um, and a sort of simplified narrative. This is a reminder to myself to not seek out objects or memories because of how um, they might evoke a sense of comfort, but be also to have um, almost a warning of the ways that nostalgia can cloud our view of a certain time. This last piece on the wall, um, a pseudo plaque, uh, is a bronze cast that um, my friend and collaborator uh, Aisha Ali had been working um, working with me on, uh, along with uh, their sister Andela Ali, and the three of us have been talking about um, what the sidelined might look like. Um, et al is a phrase uh, from Latin that you might see in bibliographic citations, uh, especially academic ones where there's more than two authors, but usually only the f first or so-called primary author is cited uh, in full and then everyone else is grouped under et al which in Latin means, and others. Uh, so we had taken a cue from this to um, kind of satirically make our own plaque. We had um, seen this empty bench slot that was ready for a plaque, and so we had designed that in mind for uh, the bench. We've also made uh, some rubbings, uh, so using graphite to rub on top of this plaque and left those at the front of the gallery so that others can take this back and perhaps put it in a space that uh, they have been able to make and only get to with the support of others. What's most interesting to me about the relationship between memory and monuments to memory um, is the authority that we give the image, especially the photographic image. Um, I noticed when I was on a residency at the Gay Archives of Quebec um, that uh, we, we attribute a lot to this idea of evidence uh, especially as queer people of color who have not seen themselves represented much in archives, uh, especially um, public institutional archives, that this idea of evidence was very important to us. Um, and although I do think that is true, there's also a danger to leaving uh, everything up to this shot of um, a moment that has passed. I think of I think back to the ways that uh, I think back to the fact that I didn't know we have we had a uh, we have a gay archives of Quebec and that I didn't it did not strike me at first that my uh, photographs would be deemed worthy to be put into an archive even though most of what I've seen in there are photos of parties, casual uh, interactions, portraits, um, and not necessarily a grand event. Uh, so who are we inviting to, to participate in these archives? Who are we asking uh, to contribute to them? How are we letting other people access this information? In two of the pieces, I've embroidered the word proof as a watermark or an obstacle to the 
uh, actual image as a way of returning it back to this um, state of unfinishedness, a state that is unowned, a state that is not um, yet solidified. I was inspired by printmaking and um, just the, the way that everyone's graduation photos always seem to um, not be ready yet, and so uh, this idea for me of the proof um, was one way of envisioning what it would mean to have something that is open to change. Um, and I have some other elements of that as well in the embroideries. Uh, there are these small color swatches at the bottom of each photo. Again, referring to the process of printmaking um, and further putting the image into a state of negotiation uh, and calibration. Uh, for me, it signifies um, an openness to responsiveness from others who might want to uh, change and adjust um, a photo. Uh, these images individually, um, one of them is about the anti-displacement garden in Chinatown, uh, Toronto's Chinatown. Um, they, over the summer, were, uh, the, the garden was going through a period of um, possible commodification and gentrification. Um, they had the public seating taken out, and one day I had just found some chairs put on the side of the curb, and so I had brought them to the garden, and I thought it was um, a fitting scene of how the rapid change was um, leaving folks behind uh, in Toronto's Chinatown. And so this, this idea of the unowned and always changing in uh, the idea of a proof was compelling to me in there. Um, but it was also compelling for me in, in the other image of myself and my partner in um, their bedroom in Scarborough. Uh, I have uh, this image of our feet next to each other is um, slightly ambiguous uh, in, in thinking back to what I saw at the Gay Archives of Quebec. I was uh, questioning who and what might be considered queer enough to include in such an archive and what um, this increasing ask for visibility and representation means for um, an ambiguous or uh, a more liberatory way of expressing ourselves dis, uh, outside of the confines of a, a legible queerness. I'm looking forward to getting back to these collaborations, um, being able to spend more time, more unorganized, unscheduled time with people, um, to be able to talk about what we what we see that is lacking in our spaces, um, and also just envision uh, for ourselves in our daily lives what, what those small, small changes and adjustments might look like.